Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Happy Thursday and welcome to October. Uh, I mean, what an exciting month. Uh, we're going to end it with a big Halloween celebration here on our property as part of uh, the what used to be known as the Main Street Fright Night. We're going to be one of the host locations as they figure out a new way of doing that. So start bringing in your candy and uh, helping us to, to bless kids with uh, lots of chocolate and sugar. Uh, and I say kids, you know, some of it may be sampled by uh, those of us who are around it all the time, but not a lot, okay, just, just know that. Hey, uh, we're still in Mark chapter six, and uh, it's a passage I'm gonna be talking about today that is, is kind of long, so I'm not gonna read it. I'm gonna tell you the story about what happened to John the Baptist. Uh, now, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Uh, he was the forerunner that came before him uh, and, and shared about the Messiah that was coming. He was calling people to repentance and to baptism. He was baptizing in the Jordan River. He baptized Jesus at the start of Jesus' ministry. And, uh, and as a prophet, he pointed out things that were not right. And so he had offended the king of Galilee, King Herod. Uh, and, uh, and Herod was over the, the northern part of what's now Israel, and that was his territory. And Herod, uh, as king, had decided he was going to marry his brother's wife. His brother wasn't dead. It wasn't a widow situation. He just took his brother's wife as his own wife. And John the Baptist called him out on that and said, hey, that's wrong. You're sinning. You need to repent. And so Herod, he was king, had him arrested. And he really wanted to put John the Baptist to death because he embarrassed him as king. But uh, he knew he couldn't do that because the people considered John to be a prophet. And he was a prophet. And he was a righteous man. And so Herod just kept him locked up. And, uh, but Herod's wife, Herodias, who, who was the, the one he was committing adultery with, as, had been married to his brother, hated John the Baptist, just hated John the Baptist. And so she wanted him dead in the worst way. So Herod's throwing a banquet, and, uh, and as most banquets, he's uh, drinking too much. Uh, and Herodias' daughter from a uh, previous marriage uh, danced for the guests, and she uh, danced in such a way that aroused Herod, and he was all excited, and he made a promise. He said, uh, because what you've done pleased me so much, whatever you ask for, I will give you. Well, her mom had already told her what to ask for, and she said, I want the head of John the Baptist on a plate. And scripture tells us that Herod grieved, but he sent word, uh, and they executed John, took his head off, and brought it to her on a plate, and she gave it to her mom, and her mom got her revenge. Uh, that's the story of how John the Baptist died. And, uh, and you might go, that's a really gruesome story, then why, are you, why is it in the Gospels? Why, what's it it's all, all about? Uh, well, it's wrapping up uh, what happened to John, but it also tells us some things that we shouldn't do. Okay, so let me just share with you some, some thoughts from this story that hopefully will help you in this process of being a follower of Jesus. The first thing is, don't ever make casual promises. All right, that's what Herod did. Whatever you want in all my kingdom, I'll give to you. Well, and he was under the influence of, of wine, so you know, don't make promises when you're drunk. And he was under the influence of women, uh, who wasn't his wife. Uh, and so uh, he, he used a lot of factors in making a bad decision. And can I just encourage you, don't make casual promises. Uh, there's other stories in scripture of people who made stupid vows uh, and it costs them the lives of their daughter. It costs them, you know, all kinds of things. So uh, just go ahead and, and decide you're not going to say stupid things publicly. Because that's why Herod had to keep his promise, because he'd made this promise publicly. He didn't want to be embarrassed in front of all his guests. So uh, think about it before you say it. Proverbs says, even a fool is thought wise if he remains silent. So uh, just watch what you're going to say. So don't make casual promises and... Secondly, don't forget, especially as a follower of Jesus, don't forget that the best is yet to come. Now, this is a tragedy on one hand because John the Baptist, who is innocent, is executed for no good reason. Uh, but I got to remind you that healing and deliverance in this world is less wonderful than completion is in heaven. Okay, let me say that again. The, the, the healing or deliverance that we pray for and beg God for in this world is less wonderful than the completion of who we're going to be in heaven. So when we leave this world, whether it's by old age and dying in our sleep or whether it's by some kind of tragedy before then, if you're a follower of Jesus, guess what? 
To live is Christ and to die is gain. It's better. It's better. Heaven is better than anything that happens in this world. Uh, a lot of times we'll be greeting each other on Sundays or on the weekends and we'll say stuff like, hey, how you doing? Well, you know, uh, couldn't be better. It's not true. Folks, as followers of Jesus, the best is yet to come. The Apostle Paul said, I do not consider this present suffering worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. The best is yet to come, no matter how good it is or how bad it is right now. If you're a follower of Jesus, then heaven is ahead of you, and it ought to fuel you with that hope that even in the midst of tragedy, the best is yet to come. It only gets better. It only gets better. And if that, will, you know, if that truth will be in your heart, it will change everything you do. Every attitude you have will be flavored by eternity. So uh, don't make casual promises. Don't forget the best is yet to come. And, and don't put your hope in the physical, or don't put your hope in what's going on right now in this moment. Uh, John the Baptist wanted to be set free from prison. His followers wanted him to be set free from prison. Okay, that was his hope. But ultimately, his hope was in God. And our hope is in Jesus. And, and we need to hold on to this right now especially. Because with all the COVID stuff, uh, the economy for you or for you know, your industry may be in the tank. There's a lot of people who are struggling. There's a lot of people who are afraid. Uh, there's a lot of people with the election right now who are terrified of what the outcome might be on both sides. And, and I'm just telling you that uh, our hope is not in physical healing. Our hope is not in uh, being delivered from our circumstances. Our hope is not in economic provision. Our hope is not in electoral outcomes. Our hope is in Jesus. And whether we live or whether we die, let's do it for Jesus. Whether we are rich or whether we are poor, let's praise Jesus. Whether we are healthy or whether we are chronically ill, let's live for the glory of God. Because the best is ahead of us and our hope is not in this temporary world. So uh, John the Baptist story ends tragically, ends prematurely. Uh, but you know what? He's not complaining one bit because he is made perfect in a world where there's no more suffering or sorrow or death or pain because God has done away with the old things and all things are made new. Until that day that you are made new in Jesus, I pray that you will praise him, you will serve him, you will grow in your knowledge of him and you will love him more and more every single moment. That's my prayer for you. Have a blessed day, Calvary.